Absolute all-time favorite tunes um, that you have sang, but also it's just one of my all-time favorites. Um, ever since I heard you sing that for the first time, oh, actually, the music video to that, uh, I have been playing that one on repeat, just kind of preparing for this show. And so it's been stuck in, in our heads um, a lot oh. over here. Thank How you. you. Yes. <laughs> How are you doing, Singe? I'm doing great, you know, expecting now. Now it's public. Now I know, it's, it's very public. So here's the thing. Last time, uh, before, okay, last time I saw you, you were not married and you were not expecting, and now you are married and expecting. I'm so happy for you. It's during COVID. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm so happy for you. That's awesome. And um, how is all of that during uh, quarantine? Um, really, it's great. You know, my husband is the love of my life and my best friend. So we get along so well being at home. You know, we don't oh. have a lot of flat, a lot of fights or anything. That's um, good. He's That's good. <laughs> and he's sparing me work, so I'm barely working now. So I'm like already staying at home, staying at home. And since I have to be quarantined anyway, it's a great time. You know. Yeah, I'm yeah, it's a good time to. Yeah, I agree. Um, so you, um, I, when we were talking, you and I have been talking about doing this for about a couple weeks now. And when we were talking, you mentioned something to me that I just thought I had to share because I thought it was fascinating. You are also, some, something I didn't know about you, you're also a painter, is that right? Yes, I do paint. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have brought along something that I want to show everybody that I think is pretty cool. Um, can you tell me something about this lovely lady right here? Is it me? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, uh, yes, yeah, it's the painting that you sent me. Oh, okay. So, so that portrait, I call it towel dried selfie. And I literally, I've always, you know, I love Vincent van Gogh and I know that he would paint himself a lot. He would paint a lot of portraits. And up to that point, I hadn't painted anyone. Mm -hmm. And so I decided I got to try to paint someone, but it's not like I have, you know, I wasn't dating at the time and I was living with my mom and she traveled a lot. So I decided to use myself as uh, my model. So, you know, one time I just got out of the shower and I put my hair up in a really cool situation bun. Mm -hmm. And I thought, gosh, I love that. So I just took a picture of myself in the mirror and I thought, perfect, I'll just paint that because I can always go back to my own face for reference. So. Oh, I see it. I can see like now, I mean, I see the towel and like the smoke and everything or the steam. I love it. Yeah, that is I, when you sent that to me, when you sent that to me, I was like, I have to I have to share that with people because it's beautiful. And I also am curious when it comes to like because um, we also talked about writer's block. And I'm, I'm wondering if when it comes to writer's block for writing music, do you do you tend to like turn and funnel that into your artwork or do you do you find other outlets to to kind of pursue whenever, you know, you're a multifaceted, talented artist. Do you find other venues whenever you feel that coming on, the writer's block? Yeah, so that's definitely, I think, why I started painting. You know, I wasn't coming up with anything new. I was feeling kind of like I don't want to do the same or sound the same. So right. I was like, let me try something else. 
Let me try to visually create what I'm feeling. And so that's why I started just trying to paint. That's fascinating. I love that. Now, um, you were telling me something. I, I want to kind of uh, switch topics here drastically. You were, you were telling me a little bit about something you've been, an organization you've been working with. And I wanted to ask you to kind of share a little bit with us about what it is. It's called Operation Underground Railroad, right? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about, about what that is and um, about maybe how, if, if we want to, how we can get involved? Yes, absolutely. So I found them because, you know, obviously being at home a lot and being on social media, you know, I started going down the rabbit trail and and finding out a lot of conspiracy theories and a lot of, you know, evil, dark, cruel things going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And you know, my husband would say, you know, take it easy, baby. You're expecting, you know, you don't want the negativity. And I'm like, no, I have to know. I want to know the truth. I want to okay. be enlightened. Be prepared. And so I ran into this organization, which their website is ourrescue.org, okay. with two R's, you know, O-U-R, mm -hmm. and that also the O-U-R is Operation Underground Railroad. And I found them, and it was kind of like a little bit of light, because they work with um, retired or people that used to work for the CIA and military personnel, or really anyone, even like grassroots people like you and I, we can host like an event at home and do fundraisers and things. But they're an organization that, you know, fights against human trafficking and child trafficking. Okay. And they're supposed to obviously rescue and stop, you know, the, the operation going on yeah. and work with law enforcement, of course, and then reinstate the child or the victim back into their home, their parents, or a safe house, or a verified orphanage. And I just thought, oh, thankfully, yeah. something positive I can, yeah, you know. absolutely. Making some sort of difference. That's, that's very important. Well, that's, a, that's do you have, so the, the website for that was um, listed, that was Operation Underground Railroad. It's O-U-R? R-E-S-C-U-E, -E, so OurRescue.org. But if you do search Underground Railroad, it comes up. That's how I found them. Okay, but perfect. But what yeah. they do have is a training. They do a training for anyone that wants to take it. It's like a free hour class with questions, and they teach you kind of how to spot, what to do, and how to report if you see something. Because they say, you know, if you see something, say something. Yeah. It's slow. And they teach you how to do that. Okay. Well, thank you so much for letting us know that, Cinch. I, I, we will look into that. I mean, we'll definitely uh, check that out. Um, and then um, I have one last question that I want to ask you um, okay. before I let you go tonight. I want to ask if you could collaborate with any artist in history, who would it be and why? Oh, my gosh. In history. Any okay. artist ever. That's a tough one. I have a few. You know, I'm from Brazil, so I do have, like, a Brazilian artist who is alive. His name is Caetano Veloso. Okay. And then also Daniela Mercury. Those are, like, my two favorites from Brazil. And because they are, like, the root of what I grew up to and what I look up to musically and as human beings. Yeah. And then if you want to say in America, I would say Prince. Oh, I love it. Okay, fantastic. That's those are see those are all great answers. And I know it's never going to be easy answering you know for a musician to answer a question like who is your favorite anything or who would you collaborate with specifically. Cynthia, thank you so much for doing this with us tonight. I am deeply thankful. This was our very first act on our very first trios and you killed it, Cinch. Thank you so much, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. All right, everybody. Say bye to Cinch. Bye, Cinch.